Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lowly exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go rejoice rejoice emmanuel shall come to thee o israel O come, O come, the Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times didst give the law. In cloud and majesty and awe, rejoice, Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Oh yes, he will come to her. Wow, today would be a good day, wouldn't it? Yes, oh how Israel needs her Redeemer to show up. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God, y'all. Y'all, this is December 4. Everybody's starting to decorate, so I did too. I just hauled out a tree. You don't have to water. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Matter of fact, this goes back to my crafting days. I, I made that myself, and um, I love it as a matter of fact, so I hung it up for you to enjoy. On this December 4, we will be finishing up Daniel today. How about that? We are in Daniel chapter 11, and we will pick up with verse 36. Daniel chapter 11, picking up with 36. Then the king shall do according to his own will. They do, don't they? He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods. So this king's in trouble. And shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what has been determined shall be done. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers nor the desire of women. What does that lead you to think? Nor regard any God. For he shall exalt himself above them all. Whoa, we have sunk to a low level, haven't we? But in their place he shall honor a God of fortresses and a God which his fathers did not know did not know. He shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. We hear about this today, don't we? Suggestions to divide the land. You touch that land that God possesses and 
cherishes and has given to his people, you're in trouble. At the time of the end, the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. Sounds like Revelation, doesn't it? He shall also enter the glorious land, both words capitalized, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. Also, the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and no one will help him. No one. We move along to chapter 12. At that time, Michael, Michel, shall stand up. The great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. Worst trouble to ever hit, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Delivered! Woo! What a glorious word. Everyone who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Oh, that's when the dead is going to rise. Some to everlasting life. And some to shame. And everlasting contempt. So that just explains heaven and hell quite clearly. Those who are wise, wise, y'all, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Daniel got a peek into the end times, didn't he? Many shall run to and fro. Boy, is that today? I mean, I hopped on a plane in Florida and back to South Carolina. People coming and going everywhere. Planes getting them places. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And oh my goodness, hasn't it? I mean, it's, these experts say it's doubling, it's tripling, it's this, it's that, it's the other. And are we getting wiser? Mm, leave that alone. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, he came down from heaven, didn't he? How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Very good question from Daniel. And then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven 
and he swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. And this has been determined to be three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, that won't be a good time, will it? All these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. And then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, because we'll, Israel will return to that, offering sacrifices. And the abomination of desolation is set up. This thing that everyone's supposed to worship. There shall be, and here's, here, here's a big clue, 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you, Daniel, go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. In the resurrection, right? I mean, that is such an explanation of our end times. Wow. All right, we move right along after that amazing account. And we are in 1 John, the little epistle book in the New Testament. 1 John, chapter 4. Chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who is in you is greater. Yes, he who is in you is greater. He who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Greater, greater, oh yes, greater, greater. He that is in you is greater than all the rest of the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, in the flesh, is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them 
because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who knows God hears and understands this reading of his word. He who doesn't is puzzled, doesn't understand. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Error. Miss the mark. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7, and 8. Oh, I love it that that tune told you where to find the song. Yes. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God was sent. He has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, great big word for the substitute, substitute for our sins. Although he did not sin even one time, he went to the cross and paid the painful beating hanging on that cross with nails in his body till he bled to death and died for you, for me. I should have been on the cross for my own sins. You should have been on the cross for your own sins. He already did it once and for all, and it was accepted by Father God. And the last words he cried were, it is finished. And now you can come to Father God through Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son. And you can confess your sins and receive him into your heart. You can ask Holy Spirit to come and live in you and guide you and direct you and comfort you and encourage you for the rest of your life free Jesus paid the price you'll never get another offer like that and the devil has no offers just destruction so everything else in this world that is offered to you is temporary it's going to fail. It's going to go away. It's going to rust. It's not going to work. I mean, there will be a problem with it. Please, please, please accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior who paid your price. And now you can be free in him. He has a plan for your life that's far greater than anything you and I could think of. So please, receive him today. Oh, hallelujah. Beloved, let us love one another. And that's all we'll know. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. And knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested, showed toward us, 
that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the substitute for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And I just want to say, I love you. I love all of you. You are precious. I think of you. I pray for you. You are awesome. You are children of the living God. And I'm a part of you, and you're a part of me. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us and by this by this all that love we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that the father has sent the son as savior of the world whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God. God abides in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. If you have fear, Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him how fearful you are. Tell him what you're fearful of. Confess it. Ask him to forgive you for giving into that fear. Ask him to help you. Ask Holy Spirit to come. And he is perfect love. When he comes, you will find fear will leave. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment doesn't it when you fear something i mean it just eats at you and eats at you it torments you your mind goes over and over and over and your heart is depressed and needs to be dealt with because jesus defeated the spirit of fear on the cross you don't have to have that anymore and there's a lot to fear in this world today, isn't there? Our very existence. Don't fear. Don't fear death. Death is just a door. However it happens, it might happen peacefully and quietly in a lovely, lovely way. It might come in tragedy, an accident or it might be a very tough death to someone you love. But if they know Jesus, they have left all that and they are in his presence. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Isn't that true? When you found that out, when you really realized that, why you just wanted to love and worship him. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. A liar for he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen. How can he love God 
whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Please, please fall in love with these words and cause them to have life in your life. These words are living words, and they can jump off the page at you, and they can come inside you and change you into the likeness of our dear, precious Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We move right along now to Psalm 123. There are 150 Psalms, so you can see how far along in the year we are. And by the date, December 4 today, Psalm 123, and these are songs of ascent. They, went, they stood on steps and kept going up. Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. Have mercy on us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorn of those who are at ease with the contempt of the proud. Wow. Short, sweet, but like an arrow. That little Psalm 123, and we move right along and wrap up today's reading with Proverbs chapter 29, verses 2, 3, and 4. Proverbs 29, 2 through 4. When the righteous are in authority... The people rejoice, but when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Seems to me I hear a lot of groaning in my ear at the moment. Whoever loves wisdom makes his father rejoice, but a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. Oh, they'll get you to spend on them. And you'll wonder where it all went. But a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. The king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives bribes overthrows it. Hmm. Now that word bribe, seems to be very prevalent today. Lord, we're asking you to shine light and bring truth out into the open public of every bribe that has been taken. Every wasteful penny of the taxpayers, our money, on wicked things. Please, we desire, Lord, a cleanup of America, a cleanup, an exposure of wicked, lawless people. Lawless. Don't believe in the laws. Don't believe in the Constitution. Want to change it. Want to get rid of it. Time for the common people to stand up, isn't it? And say, oh, no, you don't. Those things have kept this land a couple hundred years, the freest country in the world. Let's not lose it. The king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives bribes overthrows it. Oh, uh, if I were rich, I would I would purchase some billboards 
put that out there because that's God's word. God's word. And he's not changing it. Y'all, let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for you. We're so grateful for your word. Your word, Lord, brings us truth. It, it clears up all the confusion. It shows us right from wrong. And we can follow you. We can follow your righteous ways, your righteous plan. We can be in your body, your body. And I encourage, Lord, all the people who have let something in the church hurt them, but you've made a poor decision to just leave. Well, I just won't go back there anymore. Those people, yada, 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 yada. Well, how about you, yada, 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 yada. How about me, yada, yada, yada. Precious Holy Spirit, please come to us. Come to us. Let us know that if we get upset, if we fear, or if we are offended and we leave, we leave a hole in the body of Christ for Satan to torment Please, please, let this birthday season of the Most High King cause you to settle all old scores, all old unforgivenesses, all old hurts. I mean, go to people if you need to and confess. It might be something happened 50 years ago, but Get it out of your soul, out of your spirit, out of your mind, and forgive the people, the situation, the church, and come back. For you are a part of his body. And he never said one word about his body being all broken and cut up and part of it here and part of it laying over here. And no. His body is all one, all one. Many buildings, perhaps, but one roof, one roof, the covering of the right hand of God Almighty, the Father, the Son sitting at his right hand. Oh, precious Jesus, we pray, Lord, we pray you are at the right hand side of your Father now having having won the battle. And precious Jesus, we'd ask that you would speak to the Father on, on, on our behalf, that you would speak to the Father <clears throat> on behalf of his children involved in a terrible, disastrous war that they never started, they never wanted. Precious God, we'd ask that those responsible, those who absolutely hate and detest mankind, humanity, been taught hate since a baby, don't know anything else but hate. Father God, if you can redeem any of them and bring them unto you, there is nothing too bad or impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible. For the Lord, your word says, please, Lord, our heart's desire would be that they all get saved and serve you. But Father God, Father God, I bring up this 14-year-old girl's testimony that I heard on Jewish broadcasting yesterday, who saw it all, who had her whole homeland, her house. They came in, and she said they even had delight tormenting dead bodies. This is the devil at his worst. Father God, we hold up you as a standard. We hold up you. Greater is he who is in us than he 
who is in the world. And Lord, we lift up Israel right off the bat. We lift up Jerusalem. You told us to pray for Jerusalem. Please, Lord Jesus, please, please let Holy Ghost be with the IDF, Lord, the Israeli Defense Forces. Cause them to be empowered by you. Fewer in number, perhaps, but way more powerful. Cause them to hit the mark. Cause them, Lord, to clean up this attack. Lord, we hold up America to you, and we'd ask, Lord, that you would clean up America's wickedness, bribery, lying, cheating. Lord, we have a, an election coming next year, and I lift it up already. And I'd ask, Lord, that every single way that there was cheating last time, stolen ballots, destroyed ballots, and I believe in them. Lord, please, please, the ultimate wonderful way is one paper ballot marked by one hand whose ballot it is and counted honestly and honorably. Precious Lord Jesus, we'd ask for a return of righteousness in this coming election. We'd ask that all of us would be indignant and perhaps volunteer to work at the polls and have guts to bring up anything we see as wrong. Precious Lord, precious Lord, please put your people, the ones you want, in the right places in America. The ones who would honor and bring righteousness in your name, in your name, that once again we could see and truly say the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord over America. Precious Lord, let us turn up the light that we still be a beacon light to the rest of the world, that to have your country be in love with God, with his only begotten Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ is the way we want to go. Lord, we cry out in prayer to you. We cry out, Lord, for all those events and issues and people on our own prayer list. Lord, we cry out to you on behalf of these friends, these relatives, these situations. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would bring new answers, new ways, that old things would pass away. And behold, all things would become new. And all of God's people cried a hearty amen and went about your day in a beautiful fashion on this December 4. I love you. Oh, the Lord loves you so much more. Have a great day. Bye-bye.